Eight years ago, myself and my husband were days away from the induction of our second son. I was almost 39 weeks pregnant. We had all the plans made, baby grows, baby hat, teddy bear, all ready for his arrival. However, these plans were not made for his life, but for his death. At our 31 week scan, we discovered that all was not well with our much wanted son. The scan went on for what felt like an eternity, but we were oblivious until she said there was an issue with our son's heart and brain. There was no consultant there for us to talk to, so we were sent home and had to come back a few days later. After two further appointments and an amniocentesis, it was confirmed that our beloved son had Edwards syndrome and my son would not live after birth. We immediately asked about having an early induction, but we were not allowed and we would have to wait until I was full term before an induction could be done. It was a process we had to go through. We received no other choices and we were sent on our way with instructions to come back every week for a scan. The following weeks and scans were horrific. Going into the maternity hospital every week to see if our son was still alive was horrific. I had two mental breakdowns. One happened on my birthday and I was hospitalised for four days. My mind had gone into shock and my body started to violently shake. I was not able to stop the shaking. It was decided that I needed to be medicated. I was unable to look after my son, so my mother had to move in with us. My husband had to continue to work every day, pretending all was okay with the pregnancy. How he managed, I'll never know. He was also planning our son's funeral and helping me through the many hysterical crying fits that I would have. We clung to the hope that our son would live through his birth so we could look into his eyes and he could feel our kiss before he died. However, knowing that we would have to watch him die in our arms just haunted us. So after eight weeks of hell, we arrived at our induction date. We were sent for our final scan and there was no heartbeat. We were too late. He had died approximately four days earlier. All that suffering was in vain. We would never get that kiss after all. The following morning, our son came silently into this world. He was so fragile and he was the first dead person I had ever touched. Our hearts were shattered. We had his funeral two days later, his teddy bear with him in his tiny white coffin. He was buried with my grandmother. Eight years later, I am still profoundly affected by our experience. Our choice was to have an early induction, but the eighth said we couldn't. We had no choice, nothing. I was forced to be life support for our dying son for eight weeks eight weeks. However, we consider ourselves lucky. We got to say goodbye to our son in our own country. Was it worth waiting eight weeks? My answer is no. The mental and physical torture was too high a price to pay. It should never happen to anyone. Please give us parents the choices we deserve. Not every pregnancy has a happy ending or a black and white. This is not my story. Is it yours? Is it your wife's? Your sister's? Your daughter's? For the men and women who are powerless in the face of the eighth, we need to vote yes.